realized extracting the uh, after extracting the cream of all the vedic literature and the histories of the universe uh, text 42 sukadeva goswami the son of yasadeva he in his turn delivered the bhagavatam to the great emperor's parikshit who sat surrendered who sat surrendered by sages on the bank of the ganges um, awaiting death without taking food or drink text 43 Three. This Sri, this Bhagavata Purana is a brilliant of as the sun, and it has arisen just after the departure of Lord Krishna to his own abode. Accompanied by religion, knowledge, etc., persons who have lost their vision due to the dense darkness of ignorance in the age of Kali shall get light from the from this Purana. Text forty four. O learned brahmanas when sukadeva goswami recited bhagavatam there there in the presence of the emperor parikshit i heard him with rapt attention and thus by his mercy i learned the bhagavatam from the great from that great and powerful sage now i shall try to make you hear uh, the hear the very same thing as i learned it from him and as i have realized it thus ends the bhakti vedanta purport of shrimad bhagavatam first canto third chapter krishna is a source of all incarnations thank you prabhu ji hari krishna thank you mata ji thank you swamini mata ji thank you radharani mata ji sorry i forgot to start recording from the beginning uh, thanks uh, rasal krishna prabhu for uh, reminding me uh, so now we start our recording <coughs> ओम ज्ञानतिमरांद से ज्ञानाजनशलाख्य चक्षुन्मील ये तस्म श्रीगुरव नम नमो विष्णुपादाय कृष्णवरेष्ठा भूतरे श्रीमते भक्तिदातस्वामी नाम नमस्ते सारस्वती देव गौरवा प्रचारिणे निर्विशेषून्यवादी पश्चात्तिशता जाय श्रीकृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्रीअद्वैतगदाधार श्रीवासादिगौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे थैंक यू ऑल फॉर जॉइनिंग फॉर टुडे सेशन सो टुडे वी आर रीडिंग फ्रॉम श्रीमद भागवतम कैंटो वन चैप्टर थ्री श्लोक फ्रॉम ट्वेंटी थ्री टू फार्टी फोर दट्स एंड ऑफ द चैप्टर सो इन द फर्स्ट चैप्टर यू ऑल प्रॉब्लम हर्ड दट द सेजेस assembled in naimi sarinya uh, headed by saunak mahamuni so they requested uh, suta goswami to narrate the supreme lord krishna's and his uh, various incarnations uh, past times so in this chapter we see that uh, suta goswami is giving a, uh, a brief overview of some of the krishna's incarnations so that's why it's a very uh, uh, wonderful and uh, relishing chapter so in the last session uh, so you all heard uh, that the summary of the shlokas from 121 shlokas uh, 1 to 22 of this chapter so which talked about uh, several uh, incarnation of krishna like uh, varaha uh, narada muni naranarayana kapila and then narasimha vamana parashuram and lord ramachandra so in this chapter uh, we will see the rest of the shlokas <coughs> so uh, shloka 23 so we see that uh, suta goswami is mentioning that uh, uh, <clears throat> krishna's uh, incarnations the 19th and 20th incarnations uh, are krishna himself is uh, appear uh, along with uh, lord balaram <clears throat> so uh, what is the purpose of uh, this incarnation so is mentioned that uh, to remove the burden of the world So to remove the burden of the mother earth. <coughs> so we'll hear uh, uh, Krishna's uh, and Lord Balaram's past times uh, in the Shrimad Bhagavatam tenth canto. The whole tenth canto is uh, describes all the past times of uh, Supreme Lord Krishna and uh, Lord Balaram. So how they have uh, uh, performed uh, wonderful past times uh, in Vrindavana and then Madura and Dwaraka like that. So it's a uh, uh 
beautiful uh, canto where you all can release that so when that canto uh, summary time comes then you all can listen that so i'm not going through that uh, uh, all the past tense because it's a very uh, uh, the full canto is dedicated for that <clears throat> and krishna performed many wonderful past times so that's why he is known as leela purushottama so unlimited past times so in the next loka sutta goswami is mentioning about uh, uh, krishna's uh, another incarnation lord buddha <clears throat> and here we see that he is the son of anjana so anjana means uh, uh, the daughter of the king anjana so like uh, how we uh, the krishna's another name is vasudeva like son of vasudeva so similarly uh, <clears throat> lord buddha's mother name is maya so she is the daughter of king anjana and we see here that you know uh, lord buddha appears appeared in the prominence of gaya <clears throat> and prabhupada mentions in the uh, last paragraph of the purport like you know we see that shrimad bhagavatam is compiled uh, almost 5000 years ago uh, but uh, lord buddha appeared uh, 2600 years ago <clears throat> So therefore, uh, Prabhupada mentions that uh, in Srimad Bhagavatam, Lord Buddha is foretold. So that Buddha will come uh, in the Kali Yuga, in the beginning of the Kali Yuga. So and that happened. So that is the authority of the uh, scriptures. And Prabhupada mentions that uh, because these scriptures are given by the uh, Supreme Lord or the, and, and uh, uh, compiled by the liberated personalities, so they are without any trace of mistake, illusion, cheating, or imperfection. So these are the four plus that generally the conditioned uh, souls uh, has in this material world. But uh, these scriptures are compiled by the personalities who doesn't have these plus and given by the Supreme Lord. So that's why it's uh, perfect. <clears throat> and we see here that, you know, Lord Buddha, so uh, is mentioned where he is appeared, who is his father and who is his mother like that. And the purpose is uh, uh, to delude those who are envious of the faithful thieves. <clears throat> so when, uh, during that time, uh, uh, many people at that time to satisfy their trunk, uh, they are misusing the Vedic literatures or Vedic sacrifices uh, to eat meat. So that's why Lord Buddha appeared and preached non-violence. <clears throat> So that's why any spiritual process or uh, even Krishna consciousness or Sanatana Dharma, they stress the uh, point of no meat eating, <clears throat> so which is very important to understand the spiritual process <clears throat> or to progress in the path of uh, Krishna consciousness. So then Sutta Goswami mentions about uh, another incarnation of Lord Krishna as Kalki <clears throat> and uh, is the son of Vishnuyasa. And at that time, all the rulers of the earth are degenerated into plunders. <laughs> so this is, and um, Prabhupada mentions that uh, this is another foretold that, has, that is mentioned in Bhagavatam. Like uh, uh, when the Kalki incarnation will come. So it is the conjunction of two yugas. Like we have four yugas, like Satya Yuga, Treta Yuga, Dwapar Yuga, Kali Yuga. So Kalki incarnation will come at the end of the Kali Yuga and the beginning of the Satya Yuga. So that's a conjunction of two Yugas. And in the scriptures, it is mentioned where he appears also, like the village Shambhala, and the father is Vishnuyasa. So that's another foretelling. So if someone is still climbing uh, uh, now that he is the incarnation of uh, Supreme Lord as a Kalki, so Kalki incarnation, then that is a cheating. Because it is mentioned in this scripture, Bhagavatam, saying that he will appear at the end of the Kali Yuga, at the beginning of the uh, Satya Yuga. <clears throat> so then Sutta Goswami is giving that, uh, uh, mentioning that Lord's uh, incarnations are innumerable. We see like, you know, only few of them in this uh, chapter, but uh, Sutta Goswami is saying that they are innumerable. So they are unlimited. <clears throat> and he is giving analogy also, how we cannot count uh, the waves that comes uh, uh, from the ocean, uh, constantly they are coming one after another, one after one, one after another one. So similarly, so Krishna's incarnation also, 
come one after another, one after another, one after another like that. So we cannot count. So they are unlimited. <laughs> And even Lord Brahma says that, you know, Ramadi Mutteshu Kalani Mantastan, Nana Avatar. So there are so many avatars. And Acharya explains, like, you know, they are all categorized into multiple groups. Like we have Purusha avatars, which were described earlier uh, Karnana Daksai Vishnu, Garboda Saki Vishnu, and Kshura Daksai Vishnu. They are called Purusha avatars. And we have Guna avatars, Leela avatars, Manvantara avatars. And Yuga avatars and Shakti Avasha avatars. So, all these unlimited incarnations are grouped into various uh, uh, types. <clears throat> and then Sutta Goswami is saying that uh, <clears throat> all the Rishis, Manus, <clears throat> demigods, and descendants of many Manu, so who are especially powerful, they are also plenary portions or portions of the plenary portions of the Supreme Lord. <clears throat> And Prabhupada mentions in uh, his purport that, you know, so the personalities uh, who are less powerful, they are called as Vibhuti, two categories. And who are more powerful, they are called, they are called Avesha Avataras, Shikti Avesha Avataras. Like uh, <clears throat> Ruth Maharas or Parushiram or uh, Four Kumaras, Narada Muni. So they are all Shikti Avesha Avataras. <clears throat> and then Sutta Goswami mentions here that, uh, uh, all of the above mentioned incarnations uh, are either plenary portions or portions of the plenary portions. But Krishna is the original personality of Godhead. Because Krishna is mentioned in this list of uh, various incarnations. Uh, so Sutta Goswami is uh, uh, stressing that uh, Krishna is not avatar, like he is avatari. So he is the source of all the incarnations. So he is the original supreme personality of Godhead. <clears throat> so he's stressing on that. And he's also saying uh, why Krishna comes uh, time to time. So the so Lord inc incarnates to protect these. <clears throat> so whenever there is a disturbance created by the atheists, then the Lord comes and protects the these. So in Bhagavad Gita also Krishna mentions him, right? So Paritranaya Sadhuna, Vinashaya Chadushkrutanam, Dharma Samstapanardaya, Sambhavami Yuge Yuge. So whenever there is a decline in uh, dharma, so that time Krishna comes uh, and annihilates the demons and protects the devotees and then re-establish the dharma. <clears throat> so he comes again and again. But in all the incarnations, uh, Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead and he is the original personality of Godhead. And Lord Brahma also mentions in his prayers that, you know, Govindam, Adi Purusham, Tamaham Bhaja, saying that Govinda, Supreme Lord Krishna, is the Adi Purusham, the original personality of God. <clears throat> and he mentions the, that uh, all the incarnations that are coming, so they are coming from him. Like uh, how he also gives analogy, like Deeparchari Evahi Dashantaram Abhyupetya. Like how the one candlelight will lead the many other candlelights. So similarly, still the, uh, the first candlelight will uh, be mentioned as the original candlelight that lit the other candles. So similarly, uh, Krishna is the supreme person of Godhead, the original, and from him, all the various incarnation comes. So that's the analogy that Lord Brahma gives. <clears throat> and then in the text 29, uh, Sutta Goswami is mentioning that uh, whoever recites uh, the appearance and activities or disappearance of Supreme Lord with the devotion in the morning and evening, they will get the relief from all miseries of life. <clears throat> so this is the benefit of uh, uh, reading or listening Krishna Katha or Bhagavatam. <clears throat> so whoever reads uh, regularly in the morning and evening, so they will get uh, relief from all the miseries of life. So even Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, right? Janma Karma Chame Divyam. So his appearance and activities are all transcendental. So whoever understands uh, or whoever recites, so whoever uh, regularly takes up this process, uh, then punar janma naiti mameti so arjuna. So after leaving this body, they will not get another body. Means they get relief from all miseries of life. So that's a benefit of uh, uh, taking up uh, Krishna consciousness or uh, uh, <clears throat> reading Krishna Katha, listening Krishna Katha. So then text 30, Sutta Goswami is mentioning that uh, the less intelligence, uh, so they uh, 
they ha- they are not able to adjust the idea of uh, lord having a form so that's why they come up with the lord having the form as universal the supreme lord as a virat virat form or universal form so appearing in this material world so which is uh, imaginary and prabhupada mentions in the purport that uh, this virata rupa or universal form is explained in the second canto <clears throat> so it's a material manifestation of different planets so they'll the less intelligent people will conceive this universal form has a supreme lord's legs hands like that <clears throat> uh, but this is a krishna's representation of material form because some people say that you know if krishna is the supreme lord so does he have a material form also yes yeah krishna has a, a material form that's a universal form because once the lord brahma's period of time is uh, completed then the universe is also destroyed <clears throat> but the actual uh, the original personality of god at krishna all his incarnations are completely spiritual <clears throat> but less intelligent persons they want to uh, see the supreme lord as in the universal form because they want to see something big so that's why the virat universal form is the uh, representation for them and then uh, sutta goswami say that the less intelligent persons uh, so implant material bodily conceptions on the spirit self <clears throat> so is giving that and prabhupada mentions that uh, in the purport that uh, uh, <clears throat> with our material eyes uh, our senses uh, we cannot see the lord <clears throat> so it's mentioned namar at ata shri krishna namadi na bhavet grahyam indriya like you know we cannot uh, perceive krishna's uh, form with our material eyes or senses what to speak of uh, supreme lord's form even our own self we are the spirit soul but our own self we cannot uh, uh, see that so because of uh, our material consciousness <clears throat> we think that we are this body we are not the spirit soul but sutta goswami is saying that uh, beyond this gross conception there is a subtle and beyond this subtle there is a living being so <clears throat> and propada mentions that you know uh, living entity is a pure spirit soul so uh, currently in this material world we have a gross body and subtle body so gross body means the body that we see it uh, made up with uh, this five elements uh, pancha bhutas and the subtle body is made up with uh, uh, mind intelligence and false ego <clears throat> so these two bodies we are carrying so but the soul is uh, completely different uh, from this uh, gross body or subtle body <clears throat> so and then uh, sutta goswami is saying that uh, uh, a person who is self realized so they can see that you know the, the the gross body or subtle bodies have nothing to do with pure self so that time they can see krishna himself and the lord so that's what he is saying so this is the symptom of a self realized person so he doesn't identify himself with either gross body or subtle body so he will he will understand that he is the pure spirit soul part and parcel of krishna <coughs> and then uh, uh, sutta goswami is mentioning that uh, uh, <coughs> when the illusion energy is subsided so then the living entity fully enriched with the knowledge then he can become enlightened and thus become situated in his own glory so this is the process like you know when somebody acquires the spiritual knowledge and practices it uh, based on that spiritual knowledge then the influence of the maya will be reduced <clears throat> so then uh, they can see themselves uh, and they can they, they can also understand uh, Uh, their original uh, uh, situation part and parcel of krishna and then <clears throat> sutta goswami is mentioning that uh, uh, the learned man so they always discuss about birth and activities of the unborn <clears throat> so this is the process like you know the, because the supreme lord's activities and appearance disappearance they are all uh, transcendental divyam so prabhupada mentions that uh, the great sages uh, they always uh, discuss about this uh, try to understand of uh, krishna's uh, appearance disappearance and all his activities uh, for the purpose of self realizations so once they one gets one 
comes into the self-realization status, then they can see themselves and they can also see the Supreme Lord. <laughs> so that's why Sita Goswami is telling that, uh, so Krishna is, uh, and his activities are always spotless. And he's the master of six senses and is the omnipotent, fully omnipotent with the six opulences. Uh, so this is a definition of the Supreme Lord. So Supreme Lord means uh, one who has uh, fully omnipotent with six opulences. And Parasaramuni also gives this definition in Vishnu Purana, saying that Aishwaryasya Samagrasya Viryasya Yashasriya Jnana Vairagyasya Chaiva Sannam Bhagam Itinka. Like he says that Supreme Lord means uh, who possesses uh, all wealth, then strength, then name and fame, and then uh, knowledge, then beauty and renunciations. So these, these are the six opulences uh, Supreme Lord has full. So no one will have more than uh, Krishna, the Supreme Lord, or uh, equal to him. So if we say that you know somebody has equal level, then there are multiple Supreme Lords. So no one will have more than him and equal to level also. So that is also mentioned in uh, Sveta Sura Upanishad, saying that Nathas, Nathat Samas Cha Adi Abhi Adhikyas Cha Trishyate. So no one can be equal to him or higher than him. So everybody is lower to him. And then Sutta Goswami is saying that uh, the foolish people, so they cannot know the transcendental nature of the Supreme Lord. His forms, names, or activities of the Lord. <laughs> so this is this is a uh, <clears throat> Prabhupada mentions that because people who are less intelligent, Alpa Medasha, so they are busy with either gaining the material knowledge or reading Vedas for the purpose of temporary benefits, like worshipping demigods, like that. So that's why they cannot understand the transcendental nature of the forms, names of uh, Krishna, the Supreme Lord. Then who can understand? She says that only who rendered unreserved, uninterrupted, favorable service, Anukulyana Krishna Anusila. So they can be able to understand the Krishna in full glory, full glory, power and transcendence. So this is the criteria. So Krishna says that, you know, Bhaktyamam Abhijanate. So who can understand? Only my devotees can understand as he is. So, how we can start uh, to understand Krishna? So, what is the steps? Then it says that, you know, Sevan Moki Jufadu Swayam Yevas Purate Adaha. So, the step is uh, uh, using our tongue in the service of Krishna, like chanting Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Of course, today is uh, Pandavani Jalekadasi. It's a very auspicious, beneficious. So, we can utilize that and chant more uh, number of uh, rounds of Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. So that is how we have to start using our tongue in the service of Krishna, chanting Hare Krishna Maha Mantra or uh, uh, reading the scriptures and taking Krishna Prasadam. So that way we get slowly get purified and then gradually we will be able to understand Krishna as he is. So that's why uh, uh, <clears throat> Sutta Goswami is appreciating here uh, all the sages of the assembled uh, sages assembled in the Naimi Saranyam for inquiring Krishna's pastimes or his incarnation pastimes. So he's saying that uh, these such inquiries will make one be successful. <clears throat> Not only successful, it will also guarantee, it will give guarantee, send percent, saying that 100 percent. So immunity from the re repetition of birth and death. So this is the success formula. So one wants to be success. Uh, uh, in this uh, human life, uh, so this is the pro formula. Okay, saying that, uh, so that we have to inquire about uh, Krishna and his uh, various incarnations, pastimes, appearance and disappearance. Uh, so that way we can avoid the uh, repetition of birth and death, the cycle of uh, birth, death, old age diseases. So these are the basic miseries. So Janma Mrutu Jaravyadi Dukkha Dosha Anudarshanam. That's what Krishna says. Us. So to escape from that, uh, so this is what the, we have to do. <clears throat> and Sutta Goswami is saying that uh, so see, this is Srimad Bhagavatam is a literary incarnation compiled by Srila Vyashwari. And this will give ultimate good for all the people. And all successful, all blissful and all perfect. And Prabhupada also mentions in Bhagavatam that uh, in, in the purport that uh, 
So Lord Sri Krishna and this Bhagavatam, Srimad Bhagavatam is non-different. So whatever the benefit one can achieve associating with Krishna in person, so the same benefit can be achieved in associating with this book Bhagavatam, so Srimad Bhagavatam. So uh, and this was compiled by Srila Vyasadeva in his mature state, so in mature age. So that's why it's called Mahapurana. <clears throat> Amala Purana, Mahapurana. So that's why here Sutta Goswami is recommending everyone to read Bhagavatam. So if somebody doesn't have a copy, so he's Sutta Goswami is stressing here to get a copy and read regularly. And then Sutta Goswami is saying here, so this Bhagavatam, <clears throat> Sela Vyasadev, who compiled it, he gave it to his son. Who is son? His son is Sukadev Goswami. So he is a self-realized. And this Bhagavatam is a cream of all Vedic literature. So uh, that's why it's called Amala Puranam or Mahapuranam. <clears throat> and Prabhupada mentions that uh, all the stories mentioned in this Bhagavatam are not some something time pass stories. They are all actual histories that are happened. So in this universe. So all of them may not have happened in this earth planet, but it happened uh, in this universe. In the, because there are many planets in this universe. So all these pastimes have happened in one of these planets. <clears throat> so various planets. So one pastime happened in one, one planet like that. So, but they are all histories. They are all uh, uh, true. So not some imaginary stories like that. And then Sutta Goswami is saying that Sukadeva Goswami um, in turn delivered this Bhagavatam to Emperor Parikshit. <clears throat> So this, this is how the uh, Bhagavatam uh, is uh, given in the success of uh, uh, Parampara, in the disciplic succession, so unbroken disciplic succession, which is called Parampara. So it has the, uh, this uh, uh, <clears throat> knowledge is coming from Krishna to Lord Brahma, Lord Brahma to Narada Muni and Narada Muni gave it to Vyasadeva and Vyasadeva gave it to Sukadeva Goswami. And we see here Sukadeva Goswami is giving uh, to the Parishit, Emperor Parishit. <clears throat> and then uh, um, Sutta Goswami is mentioning that here, uh, this Bhagavatam is uh, brilliant as the sun. And what can it help? So it can help uh, the persons who have lost their vision due to dense of darkness, ignorance in the age of Kali. So they get can they can get the light from this Purana. So in this in this Kali Yuga. People have lost their vision uh, due to the dense of uh, darkness, darkness of ignorance. So everybody has uh, lost their vision uh, because everybody in this Kali Yuga, most of them, they are uh, mostly indulged in uh, uh, ahara, nidra, bhaya, maithunam, like eating, sleeping, meeting and defending. So not inquiring the higher purpose, uh, the spirituality, how to get out from this uh, material world. So they are unable to inquire it because of the ignorance. But this Bhagavatam can help. Uh, it will give the light uh, for those people so that they can uh, progress uh, from the path of uh, spirituality. <clears throat> and Sutta Goswami is mentioning that here. So this Bhagavatam, <clears throat> uh, when Sukadeva Goswami is uh, reciting this Bhagavatam to Maharaj Parikshit, at that time, the Sutta Goswami who is speaking now, uh, to the sages assembled in the Naima Sarinam. He was there in that assembly and he heard uh, with rapt attention. And then he, uh, he has realized it. So the same Bhagavatam is now he is repeating uh, to the sages assembled in Naima Sarinam, headed by Saunakamuni on the request of uh, their on their on their request, he is repeating it. So and two key points here. Uh, um, need to know is uh, uh, this Bhagavatam should be heard uh, from a devotee Bhagavat. So from a devotee, so person Bhagavat. So when we hear from a devotee, then we can able to understand it uh, as it is. And another point is, uh, so one should hear with rapt attention. <clears throat> and uh, later one should realize it after hearing. So after we uh, get this knowledge, so one should uh, act uh, on that knowledge. So we have to uh, put those instructions in our day-to-day -day life, like chanting Hare Krishna Mahamantra, associating with the devotees, <coughs> reading 
um, scriptures listening Krishna Katha. So that way we can be able to <clears throat> completely avoid all the miseries of our life. So this is the brief summary of uh, Canto 1, Chapter 3, Slokas from 23 to 44. Uh, thank you all for joining. So tomorrow we'll again continue from the fourth chapter. So I'll pause it here. Granara <clears throat> Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Ananta Koti Vaishnavanda ki jai. Thank you all for joining. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhuji. Krishna. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Thank you, Prabhuji.